Hello and welcome to the first video of the Markov chain topic. The main reference for all the presentations in this topic is taken from Wayne Winston's textbook, which is called Operations Research Applications and Algorithms. You may wonder why the first um, video is titled Stochastic Process instead of Markov chain. Well, you will see that Markov chain is actually part of the stochastic process. So we're going to talk about the bigger part first, which is stochastic process, and then later we'll go on to see what Markov chain is. So let's start. Suppose you're studying the price of a stock. So you know that uh, stock prices changes from day to day, and then if you um, look at the stock price for over a week, let's say, you will notice that it uh, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So the price of a stock is a random variable because you don't know the value until that time actually happens, right? Like uh, the price for a stock tomorrow, you cannot know that price for sure until tomorrow arrives and then you see uh, the actual price. So the stock price is an example of a random variable and then surely you uh, may think that there is a relation between uh, the price of one day to the price of the next day to the price of the next two days and so on. So surely there's, there's a relation between those prices. So when you try to study or model the relation between um, the value of a random variable from a time to another time to another time again, it is called a stochastic process. And then Markov chain is um, even a smaller part of that study, which we will see later why uh, Markov chain is even a smaller part of the stochastic process. Let's start with uh, defining the stochastic process first. So if we give a notation xt as the value of the system characteristic of time at time t, for example, this is the price of a stock at time t. As I've said before, we cannot know for sure the price of that stock until time t arrives. So let's say this is today, this is yesterday. We cannot know for sure the price of that stock tomorrow until tomorrow happens. But then uh, we can see that there is a relation between the prices of these uh, times and that stochastic process is the description or the model of those uh, values of the random variable from time 0, x0, time 1, x1, time 2, x2, and so on. So stochastic process try to describe or model or explain the relation between the value of the random variables at different times. Now let's see a small example to make the concept of stochastic process more concrete. In this gambler's ring game, at first I have two dollars, and then I will bet one dollar. If I win the game with the probability p, then I will get this one dollar back, and then in addition I will get another dollar. So now my money becomes three dollars. But if I lose the game with probability one minus p, then I will lose this one dollar. So now the money I have is only one dollar. The game is over if I, as soon as I reach four dollars. So if I have four dollars in my hand and then the game is ending, and then the game is also ending if I don't have any money left or zero dollar. So what is the random variable in this uh, case? So the random variable is the amount of money after you play the game at time t. So at the beginning, x0, the money that you have at time 0 is $2. And then after you play one game, the amount of money that you have is x1. After you play the game twice, um, your money uh, is denoted by x2. And then the money that you have after the teeth time is xt. So there's a relation between the money that you have at a particular time and the money that you have at the next time step and so on. So that's why we can uh, see this game as a stochastic process. 
because there is a relation obviously between x0, x1, x2, x3 and so on. Now let's see what happens if at uh, time t you reach four dollars. So at some time at t you reach four dollars and then it means that um, xt plus one is still four dollar and then xt plus two is still four dollars also xt plus three xt plus four and so on is always four dollars why is this the case because um, well you see in the problem that once we've reached x uh, t equals four you already have four dollars on your hand then the game ends which means that you cannot play the game anymore and then to denote that fact it means that xt equals 4 xt plus 1 also equals 4 and then uh, xt plus 2 and so on also equals 4 it's the similar thing if at a particular t you reach 0 your money has gone you don't have any more money so f xt equals 0 means that xt plus 1 and xt plus 2 and all later xt's will also equal 0 so in reality you don't play the game anymore but um, because um, you need to define this x for all possible t's so we need to find a way to say that if xt equals 0 then xt plus 1 also equals 0 means that uh, the amount of money does not change anymore and in reality you do not play the game anymore because you don't have any money left right so that's how we define uh, the value of xt at any time t now let's see another example where we have an urn so this is an urn so like a vase and then you have two unpainted balls inside the urn so in this game we choose a ball at random and then flip a coin if the chosen ball is unpainted and the coin comes up showing head and then we will paint that ball to become red however if we pick an unpainted ball and the coin comes up tails tails means not showing the picture of a head then we're going to paint this ball into black okay so suppose we keep um, playing this game obviously we will not have any unpainted balls left right because we've already painted them into either red or black so then what do we do so if we pick a ball which has already been painted then whatever the coins that we see in a, a coin toss it doesn't matter we just flip the color from red to black and then from black to red okay so once the ball is already painted then the result of the coin toss does not matter anymore okay so now how do we define the random variable x and the time t in this game first we define the time t we define the time the time t to be the time after we have played the game t times which means that we have finished uh, picking the balls that we select from the urn we have flipped the coin and then we have uh, painted the balls according to the rule so that's the time t and then the state at time t we may describe it with this vector of u r b u is the number of unpainted balls in the urn r is the number of red balls and b is the number of black balls so it is obvious that if we have not played the game at all or at time zero t equals zero we have x zero equals two zero zero right because we have uh, two unpainted balls zero red balls and zero black balls so uh, when we have not played the game at all at time zero the state or the condition is two zero zero after we play the game once which means at uh, t equals one 
obviously we will change uh, we will have this condition change into either 110 or 101 we'll talk about this uh, example later so um, don't worry if you're not following the details yet but um, the important point at this time is you know we define xt to be uh, the number of unpainted balls red balls and bl uh, black balls after we play the game t times so this example is the one that we've talked at the beginning of this video so about the price of a stock so at time zero the price is x0 at time one the price is x1 and then the price at time t is xt so the importance here uh, for people who analyze the price of a stock is that how do these prices from the past tell us something about the price of that stock tomorrow? Okay, so we've seen examples of the problems that may be modeled as a stochastic process. So let me ask you some questions to check your understanding. I will give a short pause in the video to give you the time to think, and then I will give you the answer after the pause of the video. Okay, so the first question, if we describe the state at time t in, the, in this game, the balls in the urn with the vector urb, it is known for certain that x0 equals 200. So two unpainted balls, zero red ball, and zero black ball. And then I say it is possible to have x1 equals 002. Is this statement true or false? Well, the answer is false. Because you remember at uh, one step of the game, you may only pick one ball from the urn. So if you have two unpainted balls at the beginning, at time zero, at time one, only one of these balls may change, either uh, to one ball becomes red or one ball becomes black. You cannot have two balls become black. So now I have another statement saying that if at time t I have xt equals 0 to 0, it is possible to have xt plus 1 equals 1, 1, 0. Is it true or false? Again, I will give you the answer after the pause of the video, which gives you the time to think. The answer is again false. The reason is because if you already have two red balls, then there is no way that you will have unpainted ball again. Right? So this is impossible. Because once you have painted balls, whether red or black, no matter what the coin says, what the coin toss says, you will only paint this ball to the um, opposite color. There is no way that you're going to uh, unpaint the ball again. So that's the end of the first video. And then we'll go on to see about Markov chain in details in the next video. So see you in the second one.